Hey everybody, this is Perch and we are doing Future State. This is week seven. Let's go with seven. I think we've got one more week after this and then it's off to Infinite Frontier and the new DC in March. So at this point, we're winding down. We've got six titles here. This is the conclusion to a lot of these titles, although some of them are bleeding into next week. Um, and kind of once again, like like last week, uh, the the problem with Future State as I see it is that there's a couple titles who, that warrant more comics than we're getting. They've compressed the story down into two. In some cases, it it either lessens the impact. I think that's the case this week with uh, Immortal Wonder Woman a bit. Definitely, it lessens the story that's being told. Superman, Worlds of War, a little bit Shazam, Catwoman. These are all stories that could have used more comics. By trimming them down to two issues, you get this somewhat jumbled effect where it starts to feel like things matter less than they inherently should. You're being told they matter, but you're also wrapping up in two issues or, you know, in some cases, this really seems to affect a lot of the two issue stories. The ones that are going four issues weirdly have the opposite problem. The next Batman is in this one and this one, um, it's like you, you didn't tell enough of a story. Like they, they went for a very, uh, quiet kind of down to earth, uh, gave us a nice sketch of the Batman, but, it, uh, it, it, it's, it's almost like they didn't do enough here. Ironically, the person who may be doing the four issue, uh, this, this, the best may be Mariko Tamaki. Uh, her dark detective is arguably the one that fits the format the best, but let's get into it. We'll go in order this time. So Catwoman future state number two, this is Ram V and this is a solid story. Otto Schmidt be doing the art. Um, the art holds up. It doesn't look uh, like it got cheaper or weird from the first issue. Uh, the coloring is doing a lot of the job here. So uh, some, you know, some good, uh, you know, oh no, it, what am I saying? Looks like Otto Schmidt is also the colorist. So hey, how about that? <laughs> Did everything. Um, anyway, it looks really good. So some good work here. This is... Um, basically a heist story, which is good for Catwoman. It's the second, it's one of two times we're gonna see Catwoman in this week. And this is the good one. Uh, this was a, a perfectly fine story about some things we get. Uh, they manage, Ramby manages to tie into the Batman relationship with Catwoman a bit. Uh, talks about some of the new kind of entourage that Catwoman's assembling around herself. We get some viciousness. We get the, you know, the return of a character we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, had a little bit of a yawn there. I promise it's not because of this comic. But but anyway, this is good. Talia's in this. Um, this uh, this comic, it, it would have been better if there would have been more of it. But all things considered, two issues. Pretty solid. Good read. Um, I'm not a fan of the Magistrate, as people by now know from these videos. But I still think it was uh, probably doing the best with this concept. It felt an original novel with the use of the train. So... I'm in. This was a. This was probably my favorite story of the week. Was Catwoman? I think it, it did a it did a really solid job. Um, Wonder Woman, the immortal Wonder Woman. We also get a backup story with uh, Nubia. This is uh, Becky Cloonan, Michael Conrad. Michael Conrad's being very very needy over on uh, the old Twitter. Uh, get off Twitter is the <laughs> constant message here. Um, you know, Jen Bartel is a good cover artist, I think. But there's some bad combination here on the interior where you've got her art. Um, we see a lot of Diana kind of flying around crying uh, for good portions of this. Like she cried a lot in this comic. Anyway, um, plus in space, would the tears freeze? I, I think they would. I don't know. Anyway, dark sides in this for like a heart, uh, you know, a minute. And we get little bearded Superman also who's, you know, dispatched into the sun. I mean... The, the challenge here is there may have been a better story if there would have been more comics. But in two, you're supposed to really be pushing on the emotional stakes. This is Wonder Woman, Diana Prince at the end of the universe. This is uh, the universe is being consumed uh, from destruction. And it is uh, it's it's all ending here. So we're supposed to see Diana as kind of the shepherd to the universe coming to an end. Uh, but in two issues, a lot, man, there's just a lot of captions. There's the thinking caption, thinking caption, thinking caption, cry, fetal position, more thinking, cry, another fetal position, cry, uh, runs into an old friend, the specter, uh, he goes away, cry, fetal position. I mean, it's just like, you know, bold, brave stance, then, you know, quickly consumed, more crying. Like they, there, there's, um, 
you know, I, I'm not, I'm not the guy like, oh, you should never show tears in comics. But I mean, d- d- enough. I, there's, there's a lot of um, telling us uh, things. And and for those who've been following along with Wonder Woman, you know, you see her as this powerful figure, the shepherd kind of at the end of the universe. This is meant to be a touching story. And so I think people who have really bought in on Wonder Woman as a character and and kind of everything she's about, um, they'll they'll feel moved. But in two issues, it feels a bit manipulative, a lot of the stuff that goes on here. Um, it just, it's, and plus we just saw uh, Diana kind of sacrifice herself in uh, Death Metal, and now here we are kind of sort of doing it again. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's not great. And I think combined with a lot of pastel colors and everything else, it's just, um, I don't know, it's, it's not the best representation of Wonder Woman or the character or any of this, um, which kind of a shame because she's an awesome character. The Nubia backup story is actually a much better story. Now this, this one, um, does some interesting things. We've got Grail in here. We have the return of Cersei and kind of some evilness going on. We do get a chance to see Nubia, um, kind of be who she is as a new character, but also tap into some of the uh, historical legacy of, of Wonder Woman and everything else. It, they do a, an effective job of showing how Nubia is not the black Wonder Woman. It is a, she's a, her own character. She's got her own thing. She's got her own kind of strength and powers and everything else. Um, it's good. It's it's uh, it's it's perfectly good. And I think they do a better job. Uh, the artist doesn't go as stylistically uh, does a better job of the hair. Man, somebody got really after me for saying like the hair was uh, was out of control in the last issue. What I mean by out of control, it's like they had the hair at one point drawn larger than her body, and then in the next frame it wasn't. It was like the hair was was growing, and she was Medusa. She turned into Medusa. Um, that's all. There's no 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 dog whistle in there. It's just you know, it, she doesn't. She shouldn't have symbiotic hair, or maybe she can. Screw it. I don't know. Do what do you want? Anyway, this is a solid. But anyway, this is a solid story. It, if anything, you know, the only downside to this is we get Diana. We take her to a remote location. It feels like a very small story in that you've got a fairly small cast, but. Um, it, it is, uh, Nubia does a good job here. I, I think it's, it's, it's a solid little story. It sets up some other things. Um, they call her, uh, you know, there, there's kind of a, an interesting threat there at the end that, uh, you know, we can follow up on. I'm curious how they follow up on this stuff is, is the question, but, um, I like that they gave Nubia her own identity in this. That was, that was pleasant. Um, Nightwing. Nightwing as a comic is, um, a relatively quick story. Basically this is, you know, Nightwing's in his hideout. He's there with the next Batman, with uh, Jace. And uh, he, he the magistrate's shown up, and Nightwing's got to get away. And he does. And so he t- it's, it's Nightwing and Batman, which weirdly seems to take more away from Nightwing than Batman, although we, we're supposed to see a little bit of the dynamic of Nightwing as the more seasoned uh, character. Anyway, Nightwing's saved by a number of members of the Resistance, um, this has Two Face in there, and Robin, and Oracle, and Oracle meaning Barbara Gordon, Talia's all this. This comic uh, needs to be read ideally after uh, Next Batman and a couple other books to make maximum sense. But anyway, uh, they get away, and and Nightwing uh, manages to defeat the evil magistrate, uh, you know, person with one eye, and uh, cool. And then uh, they 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 move on to another day. So there you go. Um, it. it Nightwing fights again with Batman for the first time is basically that story. Okay. Um, why not? Then we have Shazam. Shazam is a horror story that, that ends bad. So basically it, in the last issue, we got enough of the reveal, which is basically that down in hell, uh, Billy Batson is guarding the door for all intents and purposes. And, uh, Necron, you know, can't get through it. Meanwhile, Shazam is up on earth without Billy, uh, which is kind of without his soul. And he's just doing, Terrible things. He's killing people, and he's uh, he's being he's he's being a bad Shazam, um, and uh, and basically that this is this is showing how he is, uh, you know, he's without Billy, he's he's losing it. Uh, a number of members, uh, Bunker, it's nice to see Bunker again, uh, Vixen, and others uh, show up to try and stop him. Uh, the Spectre is is you know is is slain, or it's hard you know does he die? I, it's hard to say. What exactly is going on? But they basically force, um, you know, dead man inhabit Shazam body, force him to say Shazam, therefore bring back Billy. But Billy comes back, 
screwed up. Like he's, he's torn up to shreds. His eyes are all screwed up. His hair is white. Uh, life's bad because now the door is unguarded and this allows, uh, this, uh, the unkindness to emerge out. And there's, you know, supposedly she's going to emerge in future state. Uh, in Black Adam. So we'll, we'll see her later. But anyway, a big major threat. This comic feels like uh, Shazam, like we kind of got the idea in the first issue and the second issue was all about just kind of setting it up for somebody else. So it, it felt like a less, much, much less complete comic. And that that's, that's disappointing. Uh, Superman Worlds of War. Um, this title is curious because basically it feels like a prelude for uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson doing Superman. We again spend a lot of the comic on uh, in Smallville with these two kids who are trying to kind of remember who Superman, why he's coming back and kind of all about him. Meanwhile, Superman's off in uh, on war world with Mongol and he's uh, fighting in gladiator, gladiator, gladiator fights. And, uh, but he refuses to kill and, and he, he breaks the chains of, of the people trying to kill him. Uh, but ultimately Mongol is, is tougher and, and murders him and then resurrects him. Back to life. So once again, a yawn. Again, not not an indication of the comic. Just just tired. Um, so it, this is fine. Um, it it is. Uh, this is a comic that really needed more to it. We never really got into exactly. Um, you know, wh why is Superman doing this? Because he's trying to be an inspiration. He's trying to get the slaves to rise up. He he hates. Uh, he he will not leave. He could leave, but he won't leave until he's broken every chain on War World. And uh, every life that Mongol has taken, he's paid for, and then he'll go home. And uh, so he's, you know, basically that's the stalemate that to, to, they find themselves in. Superman is trying to bring an uprising. Very, very Hulk. Uh, and in their final, our final page shows like the various people are holding up their broken chains. That Superman's inspiring them. And uh, we're going to, this going to tap into Superman House of L number one. Weird to see a bunch of like to be concluded in next week's issue, but all right, no problem. Uh, our backup story, you got three of them. So here's a Mr. Miracle. Um, this is, uh, this is kind of leading into his solo series. Um, uh, it's, it's fine. Mr. Miracle does Mr. Miracle things at this point. Um, there is, uh, there's less going on. I mean, at this point, the, the, the title would really just benefit to getting into its own comic and start, stop being a backup. It's cool. Uh, what he's doing and, um, create, it, it, it's just, it's interesting. He, he brings out a temporal causality loop. Um, sending a message from War World, um, you know, coded for basically what's, you know, the threat of what's going on there. It, it shows him being a hero. It's good to see, um, you know, this character again. It's good to see him being a hero, but, you know, all things considered. Uh, Mr. Miracle, at this point, it's like, let's let's get over it and just get you into a comic. Um, the second backup story is Midnighter, Future State, uh, Part 2. This has got uh, Michael A. Van Oming from uh, Powers fame. So, oh, good old Bendis got him at least a, a little bit of a job. So basically this is Midnighter fighting a, uh, a cyborg version of Apollo. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and violence ensues. And, and, and I mean, I, you know, and, and, and Midnighter gets turned young and gets turned old and, there's uh, there's various there are various fighting going on. Midnighter wins in the end. It's 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 not bad. The art uh, going from Gleb to Michael is uh, is is quite a quite a weird switch. Why you would do this over two issues in a backup story, I don't know. But the story it just does go on and on and on and and um, I don't know. It doesn't bring a lot to the table. The the final story is Black Racer, and this story a little bit like. Um, you know, a little bit like Shazam and like we got the origin in the first issue. So the second issue has less like the point of it is a little bit less clear. You know, black, uh, black racer has her gear and, uh, she basically defeats the villains and then she defeats some more villains and then she jumps around a bit and, uh, she, she comes for everyone. So, you know, okay, it's, it's fine. Um, but like we got the origin story in the first issue and the second one just seems like her flexing a little bit with her powers. So, okay. Uh, finally, the next Batman. So this is uh, John Ridley with the uh, adventures of Jace. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this is a relatively short, you know, small universe story of what's going on here. Um, he doesn't come across. I mean, on one hand, he's the, the Jace. The next Batman is more grounded in that he's He's able to kind of two randos get the jump on him. 
Um, and then he's able to talk him out of what he was doing. But on the other hand, I don't know. You'd kind of assume Batman would would do more. But we basically get Batman, you know, driving around. Batman trying to save these two people. Again, this feels like a very, very small adventure, all things considered. And then finally, toward the end, he comes uh, confronted with his mom. He's forced to kind of clip her a little bit. Um, and uh, he you know, to, to get her off the table. And then he has his final little battle with a member of the magistrate and runs off into the night. And, you know, we're left hearing that uh, the Fox family should focus on being a family, which is kind of where we began. I, I mean, the Batman seems almost auxiliary to this whole thing and in many ways gets in the way. Like if we want to tell a story about the Fox family kind of what and everything they can do, cool. You can tell that story, but the, the Batman aspect of it almost takes away from this. Like you could see Jason, his own character, own identity doing his thing. Like what is the point of him being Batman at all in here? It doesn't really matter in, in, in many ways, if anything, it just, like I said, it, it takes away from the story rather than helps. Um, our backup story, we get Batgirls, uh, which is going to kind of reconcile the uh, Stephanie Brown, Cassandra Kane relationship. It's Orange is a New Black, Prison Break, and uh, these characters are you know getting away from the magistrate. If you like the magistrate and you want to see people fighting the magistrate, this, this book gives you lots of various Gotham City criminals fighting the magistrate. They rescue Barbara Gordon, they get away, and there's some kissy-kissy with Barbara and Dick. And then, um, spoiler and, uh, you know, and Cassandra Kane kind of have a hug to new beginnings. Okay. This comic should be read probably before the other one, because it, it shows a little bit how these characters got all assembled together. Um, the final, uh, comic here is, uh, the final backup story in the final comic is about Gotham city sirens. Uh, this is Catwoman and poison Ivy and uh, robot girl here are, you know, all basically fight the magistrate and they, they do that and they get away and it's supposed to be kind of irreverent. I think, you know, um, there's a, they're out of mortal danger from before they go spend a little bit of time in a hot tub. The magistrate shows back up again, tries to murder the robot girl. There's a plant dinosaur that eats some people and, uh, and all's well, it ends well. It's basically, basically what we've got. So anyway, uh, it fine. Um, doesn't really lead to anything. I think in terms of this week's future state, like I said, there's some interesting concepts here, but in many cases, they just skate over a lot of this stuff pretty quickly. Catwoman was a fun read just on its surface. Uh, Shazam arguably felt a little unnecessary given the first issue. Nightwing was a basic adventure, uh, putting the focus on Nightwing. Superman Worlds of War, it's an, it's an interesting story how he winds up in War World doing everything he's doing, um, but it's it, it, I don't know. They could have used one of those. They need some of those backup stories to kind of really talk about war world and, and how it got to be where it was. That would have been a good plan. Next Batman, eh, again, just sort of there. Um, and immortal wonder woman, uh, you know, it's, if you love wonder woman to death, you're probably loving that comic, but otherwise it, you, you probably are like, didn't I just see her kind of be at the end of everything a month and a half ago? I don't know. Like, are we, are we recycling that idea already? Who knows? Anyway, what did you read? What did you like out of this bunch? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Uh, check the description of the video for how to get in touch with me. And thanks for listening.